God's people, confused and misled, falsely sentenced Jesus to the most gruesome execution of all, death on a cross. In that moment, evil claimed victory. His claim, you have been defeated because your Jesus has been defeated. There is no hope. But that was Friday. Happy Easter, church. That was Friday. Today, we celebrate the victory of resurrection, don't we? Yeah. Man, what, a, what an awesome opportunity we have every year to get together and remember and celebrate the victory of Easter. My name is Matt. I serve here at ACC as the lead pastor, and I'm just really glad you're here. Uh, every, every face that walks in this room, I want you to know that this is a church where you are loved uh, we, we love you, and I love you, and I'm, I'm really glad you're here. I, when I talk about Easter bringing to, to, to mind this idea of victory, victory over death, right? We are here on April 1st, a day kind of set aside to play tricks on people, right? I've already had some tricks played on me today by my uh, staff and by some others in the congregation. Listen, I want you to know that even though on Friday Jesus was put dead in a tomb, Don't be fooled, because today is Easter, and we celebrate the victory of a risen Savior, right? And when I I think about victory, you know what comes to mind is I I like to think of those times in my life where I've I've had my own victories, and I like to think of, I don't like to, but what also comes to mind is those times of failure, right? You have kind of your own list. We all have those, those moments of victory and failure. Uh, the failures, for some reason, seem to, to stand out a little bit more than the victories, don't they? They come to mind a little bit more quickly. Now, let me tell you about a, a failure of my own that comes to mind. I'm going to be just a little honest, a little brutal with you here for a moment. When I was a newlywed, my wife and I, we lived in uh, Virginia. And my wife's brother lived in Delaware, five hours away. And he was starting a new career in stand-up comedy. So after he had gotten his routine kind of figured out, he invited us to come and watch him perform. Now, you have to understand, this is a five-hour drive for us. So we we get in the car, and we drive five hours up to Delaware, and we get to the hotel where this stand-up comedy performance is going to happen, and we get there, and when the show is supposed to start, it doesn't. In fact, for about 20 minutes, the show doesn't start. And then finally, my brother-in-law, he comes out and he, he sits down and he says, man, they're going to cancel the show. I said, why? What, what are they going to cancel the show for? He said, well, we need at least five people to sign up for this open mic night and only four people did. <laughs> Some of you are laughing because you already know the mistake I made in that moment. I'm like, so I drove five hours to watch you do stand up and all you need is one more person to write their name on a piece of paper? I can do that. I couldn't do that. Uh, I, I write my name down, and then we draw straws to decide who has to go first. Guess who has to go first? This guy right here. Right now, listen. From the moment I said I was going to do stand-up comedy to the moment I was on stage holding a microphone, we're talking about a total of five minutes. I was trying to think of some jokes. I was trying to think of some funny things to say. I got up on stage, and I did the best I knew how to do, and not even my own family laughed a single time during that entire performance. In fact, I look back at them. They're just kind of like, oh, we don't know him. It was really, really humiliating. It was, it was a total failure. And to make it even worse, once I got off stage, I thought, well, finally, now I can just kind of hide and, and go away. But they brought us back on stage and did the whole hand over the head thing. <laughs> to see who did the best, and I got a few pity claps. It was just, it was terrible, right? We all have a story of something you've tried, something you've done, and it just didn't work, right? You failed. If you're a parent, right, you probably have some stories of things that you've tried that didn't quite work the way you were expecting, right? If if you uh, haven't had a failure with your children yet, it's because you don't have children yet. That's really the kind of the deal there. 
I had a failure a couple weeks ago, right? First round of March Madness. I bet many of you had this same failure. This is what my phone looked like after first round. My pick, Virginia. Didn't, didn't happen, right? Man, I could go on and on about my failures, and I, I'm not going to because it would take way too long, right? But I think the problem is, is that Satan, right? The Bible tells us that Satan is, is evil and that he's a liar, and he likes to tell us lies. On a day like April Fool's, we understand that if there is a real Satan who's whispering lies into our lives, one of the lies that often comes up in those moments is what I want to call the lie of defeat. And the interesting thing about this lie is this lie often is the lie that's not screamed at you. It's a lie that's whispered in your ear. This is what maybe you might hear. Although, use your name and not my name. Matt, you're a failure. Matt, nobody liked that. Matt, you lose. You're a loser. And this lie is whispered often into our ears and into our minds and into our and we 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 eventually remember all of our failures and all of our good things seem to like we forget about them and we just look at our lives as one big failure because we have bought into the lie that you have been defeated. But what I want to talk about today here on April Fools is that if we know the trick we don't have to be fooled by it. In fact, we see in 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says this, Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Let us make ourselves familiar this morning with the lies that Satan tells so that we won't be fooled by them. Let's pray together. God, I ask right now that you would be working in a powerful way in this room what an amazing opportunity we just had to worship you together. And now I pray that as I'm speaking, God, that you would speak through me and that everyone in this room would hear truth and that the truth would beat out the lie. God, the truth is that we haven't been defeated. You weren't defeated. But you claimed victory over death and provide that same victory to us. Help us to see that truth this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one thing I, I think is interesting is we often take the word death, when we talk about death and, the, and process death, and we, we use phrase, phraseology that kind of we might use uh, as far as like being uh, defeated, like, like you're playing a game. For example, when somebody dies, often we'll say something like, they lost their battle with they lost the battle with cancer. They lost their battle with dementia. They lost their battle with old age. Or we might say, so-and-so lost their life. And we, we take this idea of death and this idea of defeat and somehow put these things together as if death is the ultimate defeat. And Satan wants nothing more than for you to, to understand or to, to, to believe the lie of you are going to die and then that's it for you. You are a loser. Like on Friday, remember that we went through Holy Week and Jesus and his disciples went into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and they're preparing for Passover and everyone's kind of doing their thing. And, and then Satan, the deceiver, tricks the created, you and I, human beings, into crucifying the creator. And on Friday, Jesus was crucified on a cross. One of the most gruesome, most painful ways to die. We did that to our, our Jesus. And Satan watched as Jesus was hung on a cross and that cross was put up as a display for people to see. And then we, we as the human beings, we watched Jesus breathe his last breath and die on the cross. And I believe in that moment, Satan must have been thinking and whispering this lie to you and to me. Look at me. Here I am, alive. Look at your Jesus. He's dead. You have been defeated because your Jesus 
has been defeated. There's no hope for you. But there's a passage in Scripture that really breaks apart that lie in such a powerful way. And most of us know how this story ends. In 1 Corinthians, if you want to open your Bible with me, you, you can. But I have the verses on the screen for you. In 1 Corinthians, which is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. Paul, in the 15th chapter of this letter, he is basically talking about the resurrection and the, the power and the significance of the resurrection. And here's what he says in verse 15, verses 3 through 4. He says, I passed on to you what was most important and what had been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins. That was Friday. That's when Satan is claiming victory. That's when he is pointing at us and claiming that we have been defeated. But let's keep reading. He was buried, and then read this next part with me, and he was raised from the dead. That's the truth right there. Yes, he, he died just as Scripture said he would. Yes, he was hanging on the cross. Yes, he seemed to have been defeated. Yes, they took his body and they put it in a tomb. Yes, he was dead in that tomb. But that ended on the third day when he raised from the dead. And I hope you believe this. I believe right now there's someone in this room, probably multiple people in this room, that you don't believe that to be true. Maybe you don't believe that Jesus was a, a real person, or even if he was, he wasn't really who he said he was, or he didn't do what we claim he did. Uh, my ask for you is in these next 10 minutes, would you do me a favor and just give me your ear for 10 minutes? Because I want to tell you not only what uh, God's Word says, I understand you don't have any reason to believe this book, but I want to share with you how these lies can, can really mess with you and how the truth has changed my life and the lives of so many people in this room. I want to share with you the truth. I don't want you to believe this lie anymore. So do me a favor and just give me your ear. You see, this lie isn't always told and just, hey, you have been defeated. This lie comes in some different formats. Let me give you one of these. Uh, there's three ways I think Satan likes to tell this lie. And one of the ways he whispers this in your ear is, hey, you, you have been defeated because of your past. You have been defeated because of your past. You cannot win because of the things you have done in your past. Now, all of us, if we're being honest, we will admit that we are broken, that there are things that we've done that we're not proud of, that there are just, there's, there's this thing in our life called sin. And I want you to understand this word sin. It's basically a word that means missing the mark. It's an archery term. Imagine if I have a, an archery, like a bullseye target on one side, and I take a bow and an arrow, and I shoot at that target, and I don't hit the mark. That word in archery is called a sin. And what it is, when we in our own lives don't do what it is we're supposed to do, when we do something outside of the plan that God has for us, the Bible calls that sin. And all of us have sin. We all have a past, don't we? And it's easy to think of those things in our past that will keep us believing this lie. You see, there's a little bit of truth in what Satan is trying to claim here. What Satan is trying to tell you is, is, listen, you have been defeated because of your past, because the penalty for sin, the penalty for your brokenness is death, and death is the ultimate defeat. You lose. But we know that's not true. We've experienced the truth. We see this in 2 Corinthians 5. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life, in other words, the past is gone. New life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ, no longer counting people's sins against them. Yes, let's clap for that. That is awesome truth. And then, and then it goes on in 1 Corinthians 15, and there's a word that I want you to say with me. When we get to that word victory, I want you to say it with me. It says, for sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But 
Thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you don't have to believe the lie that you have been defeated because of your past. The Bible says you can have victory even in spite of your past. See, in Christ, you are not the sum total of your past. You are a conqueror. In Christ, you are not just your failures. You are forgiven. In Christ, you are not just your mistakes. You are made new in Him. So you want to understand the truth? Don't believe this lie that you are defeated because of your past. The truth is this. The sting of your past is death. That part is true. But you can claim victory over death through Jesus. That's the truth. Don't be fooled. Another way Satan likes to tell this lie is you have been defeated because of your present. You are defeated right now with whatever's going on in your life. You know that cloud that you kind of feel like you're walking around in, that burden that is weighing you down? Maybe it's a, uh, an addiction. Maybe there's a, a sin issue going on in your life. Maybe there's anxiety or depression or fear or something. There's, there's something that you are feeling the weight of it right now, and you're thinking, Matt, if you only knew, you would understand why I believe this lie, that I am defeated because of what I'm experiencing right now in this moment. Maybe it's not a feeling. Maybe it's circumstantial. Maybe you lost your job recently. Maybe you don't know how you're going to make your next rent payment or your next mortgage payment. Maybe you experienced the loss of a loved one recently, and you're thinking, Matt, you don't understand. In this moment, I see no hope for me. I have lost. And that takes us back to 1 Corinthians 15 as we talk about the resurrection. The first word of this verse says, so. In other words, so, because of the resurrection, because Jesus claimed victory over death, so then, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. In other words, because of the power of Christ, because Jesus claimed victory over death, we can be strong and immovable in the present. We don't have to buy into this lie that you have been defeated. I want to share this, this verse with you. This is, a, this is going to be a life-changing verse for you right now. I'm, I'm praying here in Ephesians chapter 1. Check this out. It says, I also pray that you will understand and I'm, I, too, as the pastor of Arundel Christian Church, am praying right now that everyone walks out of this room understanding this, that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. Listen to this. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Do you understand what this verse is saying? That within you, when you give your life to Christ... You have the Holy Spirit. You have a power within you that is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You have that power inside of you. Now, we understand, Christian, listen, I understand that every day is a battle. When I just tell you that there's fear and anxiety and sin issues and addiction and whatnot, listen, I'm not telling you that if you give your life to Christ, you will have victory over those things right away and you're done. You don't have to worry about them anymore. Because we know that it doesn't work that way most of the time. What happens, the truth is, is that we, we give our lives to Christ and then that same power is within us that allows us to fight those battles from day to day, to fight addiction, to fight uh, our depression, to fight our, our, our lust, to, to fight the grief, to fight all these things. We can claim victory because we have that same power within us, right here in this present. Don't believe the lie that you have been defeated because of your present. Through Christ, you can claim victory over fear. I'm hoping that one of these words maybe clicks with you 
Through Christ, you can have victory over anxiety. Listen, it's going to be a daily battle, but we know who's going to win. Through Christ, you can have victory over grief. Through Christ, we can have victory over addiction. Through Christ, we can have victory over depression. We can have victory over sin. We can have victory over selfishness, over divorce, over greed, over pride. Through Christ, we know who's going to win those battles. And if you're in this room right now and you're a follower of Christ, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know that you have a power within you. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead within you that can empower you and help you in this journey to win and fight these battles. Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I want to share with you the truth. You see, the lie is that you've been defeated because of your present, but I want you to know the truth. Through Christ, in Christ, right now, you can access the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's the truth. Another way Satan tells this lie is that you have been defeated in your future. In other words, there is no hope for you. We find the truth, the incredible truth, in 1 Peter 1. And it says this, It is by His great mercy that we have been born again. Because, listen to this, God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, because of that, here's the truth. We live with great expectation for our future. And we have a priceless inheritance in our future. An inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Listen, if you have bought into the lie that you have been defeated in your future, I want you to know that is a lie. The truth is that God has an incredible hope and plan for you through Christ. You see, the Bible tells us that, I want you to understand something, listen. This lie that you have been defeated, there's a, there's a ring of truth to that apart from Christ. See, the Bible talks about us going through this life in our own power apart from Christ. And the reason that we're going to experience all of these, these lies and we're going to hear that we have a loss and that we're losers and that we're not going to amount to anything, the, the reason that all those things make sense is the Bible is clear, is that when you have sin in your life, the, the penalty for that is death, that you will be defeated because of those things. But the truth of Scripture says that you don't have to be defeated, that you can claim victory in Christ. It says this in, it says this in Romans 3.22. It says, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. We are victorious by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes. No matter what is in your past, no matter what is in your present, no matter if you've given up any hope for the future, it doesn't matter who you are, this is true for you regardless. And then the Bible, the Apostle Paul says in his letter to the Romans, in Romans 10, 9, it says, if, listen how simple this is, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you openly declare that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart what we celebrate on Easter morning, that Christ was raised from the dead, you will be saved. I want to make sure that nobody walks out of this room today believing the lie. I want you to be able to claim victory this morning over your past and victory over your present and victory in your future through Christ. And here's the craziest thing about victory in Christ. I can't think of any other situation in the world that this is true in, but in order to claim victory, you have to surrender. 
Victory starts with surrender. Listen, normally we understand that when you raise that white flag, when you surrender, what you're saying is, I give up, I quit, I have been defeated. But what we actually understand here in the the truth of God's word and in the truth of our experience, uh, those of us who believe, is that in that moment, what we're saying is, I surrender to doing things my way. That's not leading anywhere good. That's leading to defeat. I'm losing doing it on my own. So I surrender to myself. I surrender to God. And instead, I, I recognize that the only way to come out the victor, to be victorious, is through Christ alone. And we surrender our lives to him. If you need to make that decision this morning, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. Would you, would you do me a, a favor? Let's pray together. God, I, I, I don't want anyone in this room to, to leave this place here on Easter Sunday without having a relationship with you. God, I pray right now that if there's anyone in this room that needs to stop believing this lie of defeat, that Satan is whispering in their ear over and over again, telling them, that they are a loser, that, they're, they're, that there's no hope for them, that their, their life here and, and now is, is pointless. All those lies that the evil one is whispering into their ear, God, right now, here this morning, I pray that your truth would beat out over that lie. That your spirit would weigh heavy on them right in this moment, that they would understand and recognize right now that the only way to victory is through you and surrendering their life to you. God, if they need to make that decision this morning, I pray that you would give them the courage and the boldness to, while we sing these next two songs, to come forward and tell tell us about that. God, I pray for anyone in this room this morning that maybe they need to, to get baptized. They've given their life to Christ and they need to take that next step. God, I pray that you would give them the courage to come forward and do that today, that they wouldn't leave this church not being obedient to you in that. God, I love you so much. So thankful for what you did for me on the cross, that you conquered death so I can too. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, church, listen, we're going to sing a couple more songs. I want to invite you, if you need to give your life to Christ this morning, I want to ask you to be bold and courageous and to, just while we're singing, to come forward and tell us that you want to do that. And we'll we'll walk you through that. Maybe you need to bring a friend with you. Just grab someone's hand, squeeze them and say, I need to go up. Will you come with me? Maybe you're in this room right now and you need to be baptized. You've given your life to Christ, but you haven't been obedient to Christ through baptism. Listen, we have your size shirt. We have your size shorts. We have a towel for you. We have everything you need. All you got to do is come forward and say, I want to be baptized today, and we will get you baptized. Maybe you just need to come forward and spend some time by yourself at this altar praying about something. This altar is open for you. We want to invite you. Would you do me a favor and stand up and worship with me? If you need to come forward, come and, and see me.